Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, since the 1990s, we've become increasingly aware that erectile dysfunction is a pretty common problem. How problem? How common, you might ask? Well, the Massachusetts Male Aging Study, which was a pretty good study, hmm. says that about 50% of men have it, and it gets more common as you get older. For example, at age 40, about 40% of men have erectile dysfunction, but the rate increases to nearly 70% in men who are 70 years of age. Now, for most men who have trouble keeping an erection, oral medications like Viagra, everybody's heard of Viagra, <laughs> they seem to work pretty well with not too many side effects. But, and, you know, there's some good news. Yeah. Uh, if I'm, I think I'm correct. Viagra comes off patent this year. Oh. And so you'll be able to get generic <laughs> Viagra. And but then what? A warning, though. Consumers should be wary of any product that can, claims to be a natural form of Viagra. Herbal supplements aren't held to the same standards as prescription and over-the-counter medications, so it can be difficult to know which ones are safe and effective, or effective for that matter. <laughs> Here to discuss the dangers of herbal Viagra is Mayo Clinic urologist Dr. Landon Trost. Welcome to the program. We're happy to have you here, Dr. Trost. Thanks for having me. Dr. Trost, good to have you. So uh, Viagra and, and its cousins, they've become a huge advance, or are a huge advance in the treatment of ED, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no question. The uh, Prior to the late 1990s when these were introduced, there weren't a lot of good options out there. You could do injections or you could use vacuum devices or things like that. But when the pills came out, they offered many advantages over other therapies. Uh, it's something that happens spontaneously and enhances both the rigidity as well as the duration of the erection. So it was a dramatic change in, in how medicine was treated in this regard. How do? Uh, sorry, i got to ask him, though. Do you know the story about how the Viagra was... Came about? Yeah, tell yeah. our listeners. That's sure, just yeah. too good a story. Well, and during the original trials, they were looking for a pulmonary hypertension medicine. So they were looking for something specifically for... High blood uh, pressure in the lungs. Exactly, yep. And uh, uh, during the trials, they noticed that, well, it works okay for the lungs, but the men were reporting on the adverse event profile. So all the side effects of it, they were saying, you know, it didn't really help with the lungs, but boy, let me tell you what it did, you know, fix. Oh, and, well, and this. The mice. <laughs> yeah, and they were they were trying, they thought it was a, an, a decent antihypertensive, and they were giving it to mice. This is probably even before your time, mm -hmm. and the mice all had erections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's no, and the company Viagra. quickly yeah. realized that we're going to do far so better. The high blood yeah, exactly. And is a, is Dr. Shives here. right that it's about ready to come off of patent? Yeah, in fact, it went off of patent for the pulmonary hypertension medicine even last year. So you can get it generic now. At a, uh, they just have to write the medicine at a specific dose. So they write for the generic sildenafil 20 milligrams, and then you can get it off patent now. But next year, several drugs come off patent, including Cialis and others. So, how do they work? How does Viagra and Cialis work? Yeah, they're different than other therapies in that they essentially enhance your, your body's natural response. So your body naturally is trying to break down erections so you don't have an erection all the time. And this medicine blocks the enzyme that breaks down the erections. So uh, you normally will get a stimulus and it causes the medicines that result in an erection. And this breaks down the one that will break down the erection. And hence, it lasts longer and, and you get a, a more rigid erection than you would otherwise. Well, actually, I that's so interesting. I thought it just improved the blood flow so you could get a, an erection. Mm -hmm. And that's why it had the potential side effects of, of low blood pressure. Or, or, no? Yeah, no, it's a good question. And it's a common thing that we hear. Uh, even in the commercials for a while, they said this is a blood flow problem. Yeah. And that was our belief for about 10 years. Uh, but more recent studies have shown that it's not a blood flow issue so much as a blood trapping issue. So the blood goes in, but it doesn't stay in. And so usually you'll still get good arterial flow going in. But what happens is the smooth muscle that normally has to relax can't. And so just like a parachute, if you pull the ripcord and the strings don't release all the way, the parachute doesn't open up. And same with erections. If, if the uh, penis can't relax all the way or the smooth muscle doesn't relax, the blood goes in and it just leaks right back out. So. That's well, why leakage the commercial it's a leakage blood flow problem. But that's why the commercial says if the erection lasts more than four hours, consult your doctor. Yeah. Is that a is that a real danger? No. Okay. Um, so that has that just never ever ever happens. And we had a meeting <laughs> recently where uh, there was a combined 150 years experience administering these drugs as far as among all the providers who were there. And, and they said, has anyone here ever seen that happen? And not a single person wow. uh, had seen a case of it. So we do see that with other medicines, but with the pills, so Viagra, Levitra, Cialis, Stendra, we don't see it. What, what do you mean with other medicines? like Injection type medicines. So uh -huh. there are certain ones that can overpower your body's natural response. Uh, and in those ones, you can get you know something that lasts too long. But with the uh, pills, it just never happens. 
All right, so let's talk about then the reason you're here, herbal Viagra. Is there such a thing? There's definitely such a, a thing. In fact, it's a huge, huge market out there. Uh, now, uh, but the bigger question is, is it safe? And is for it sure. something you know you should uh, recommend or, or prescribe for it? And I think there's such a big desire for it uh, because of uh, three things, either safety, stigma, uh, or assumptions. And I think people just assume that herbal things are safer than uh, other products that are synthesized. Um, I think that uh, the uh, stigma side of it, the, with an herbal, you can just go to the store and pick it up, whereas with uh, erectile dysfunction, you have to go see a physician and get a prescription for Viagra. Mm. And then assumptions, people just assume that the government's going to take care of them and going to prevent a medicine from being on the counter or over the counter that would be dangerous. Which isn't true. Which is not true, yep. Uh, the, and I forget the exact name of it, but the DSE, no, I do have it here, DSHEA Act, uh, basically said that the FDA has no role for approving the safety or efficacy of these types of therapies. And essentially, um, the FDA has to prove that it's unsafe before it comes off the market. So it's the opposite of other drugs uh, for it. Uh, does herbal Viagra work? I mean, and why would you even think about it? Uh, well, uh, you know, because Viagra and, and its cousins work so well, but the reason you'd think about it is because you don't have to go to the doctor and get a prescription. Mm-hmm. Is that that's the main reason? And many times it's, and many, it's cheaper, maybe? Cheaper, yep, cheaper, easier. There's not that stigma associated. Um, and, and oftentimes they work just as well. Uh, and there are multiple studies. In fact, I have a list of, you know, half a dozen here that show when you take random samplings of these drugs over the counter and you look at what's actually in them, almost all of them have either Viagra or Levitra or Cialis or some derivative of that in them. Hmm. Um, and so that's why they work, because they have the same drug in there. And the, the problem is, though, they often have other things in there, too. And an herbal company clearly knows if I can give you a drug that's going to make you feel like a million bucks and you're going to get good erections and your um, energy is going to be higher, then you're going to buy that again. So it's in their best interest to put in uh, substances that help you lose weight, that give you energy, that fix your erections, because you're going to come back and buy it again. In one pill, you can fix everything mm-hmm. at once. So uh, are there some uh, patients who have had adverse side effects from taking herbal Viagra? Yep. No, absolutely. All the time. In fact, the uh, probably the one that's received the most media attention that I've seen, at least in the past you know, five to 10 years or so, has been the Lamar Odom case, uh, which was the 2015 oh, yeah. Uh, story and just to kind of sum up, he was the NBA championship guy and he's a reality TV star. He was found in a coma in October 2015 at this brothel in Nevada, and essentially he'd taken at least 10 herbal Viagra supplements during his three days that he was there, uh, and and you know certain ones reload and some of these other things, um, and it was thought that was a main contributing factor to why he had had uh, or he'd been put in the coma for it. Oh, Odom, yeah, yeah, Lamar, is that his name, Lamar Odom? Mm-hmm. Yes, Ooh, yeah, no, so. Better stay away from that stuff. Yeah. That well, like to me. if you want an over-the-counter option, what should patients do? If they are too embarrassed to talk to their doctor about it, but they are looking for an over-the-counter option, do they have an option? Well, unfortunately right now, not really okay. is the right answer to that. There's not a good one. Uh, they are, so Pfizer in particular is looking at making Viagra potentially over-the-counter. Uh, and so at a certain point in the near future, that may be an option. Uh, but right now, really your best and safest uh, approach is to, to look for a uh, prescription for it. All right, Dr. Landon Trost, urologist, talking about erectile dysfunction and the reason to avoid herbal Viagra. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll learn about a cancer treatment known as HIPEC. You're listening to Mayo Clinic Radio on the Mayo Clinic News Network. 